One of the things that we notice is that there's such a variety in what's going on when we first come in. And then notice what comes to mind. We all have history with this. And the history can be quite distressing, intense. There might have been some response to that. Most likely there was. That as a way to, we might notice that in our body, something tightened up or there might be an energy or a sensation. It's also something that's social. So we might have really lovely or really horrible associations with family meals or we tend to have a lot of thoughts around this and a lot of them are quite charged very very common to be shamed around food either when we were younger or maybe we're doing that now or someone else is doing that to us we have control issues around eating and food so it's a very charged topic and a charged area in our lives and one which really benefits from kindness and softness and compassion and which often feels a long ways away. So we could sit with the, just the complexity of that. I know some of us here have been at different weights during our life. I've had what we would call an eating disorder, certainly disordered eating. So we have really personal history. So see if you could let all of that be here, be present. our history, our associations, our frustrations, our fear. And take a few deep breaths and relax your shoulders. If you want to get up and jump around or shake or something, that's fine too. So start by noticing something around a craving, a drive, some kind of compulsion. When it arises, and it might be arising right now, in which case you could work with that directly. Or could be a very recent memory or a longer ago memory. Just notice what it is that comes up when we start to do a practice around craving or compulsion or some kind of disordered eating. And it might come up as thoughts, words, or pictures. And we're going to keep coming back to looking from awareness. We're aware that this is happening, that the words are coming in, the memories, associations. And one of the ways that we do that is we stay grounded in our body. So you might notice the way your body's moving with your breath. Your feet are on the floor. Feel your seat. You could hold your own hands is another way to really stay present in the body. Move your hands around a little bit. Give yourself that comfort and support. And as thoughts come up, notice them as a picture. Put them in a frame. I'm going to take a few minutes with this part. As thoughts are coming up, whether it's words or pictures, put them in a frame or listen to the sound and do the tapping on them. So a thought comes up of, you know, me in the grocery store, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to give in to this craving for cookies or whatever it might be for you. So let it come up as an image or words or should I have that or you don't need that or whatever it might be. And for each one, Tap on your forehead for about 10 or 15 seconds and take your attention just into the sound and sensation of the tapping. 
And then bring your hand down. And sit with this again. It might be the same thought. It might be a different one. Take a couple of deep breaths. What other thoughts are here? What other words or pictures? I want chocolate. I need. Notice the words, notice the pictures, and coming back to the tapping. I'll do this for a couple of minutes, tapping for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and then coming back to just breathing, looking at the thought. And as you're doing that, start to really tune in to the feeling or sensation in your body. So as you're finished tapping and the thought kind of lets go a little bit, come into your body, notice what is happening in your physical body. What is the sensation, the energy? Is there something tight? What's going on in your body? And see if you could welcome that. See if you could make that feeling stay. Maybe this is the energy of the compulsion. This is what's going on in the body when I'm reaching for that. Notice where it is. Notice what it feels like. That tight clench in your gut or pulsing in your throat or whatever it is. And then let the words drop away, the pictures drop away, and stay with the energy itself and see if you could make it stay, see if you could welcome it. Stay aware of your breath, that we're doing a practice, that we're interested in that sensation and knowing and being with it. And then ask yourself, what are the negative consequences of acting on this thought right now? And let yourself run through as many as come up. Shame, I don't need it, I'll feel too full, get a headache. If you were to act on the thought or the compulsion, what would the negative consequences be. Stay connected with your body and your breath. Let the thoughts come up and if something feels a little bit intense, come back to tapping on it. Just tap for 10 or 15 seconds, taking your attention away from the picture and into the tapping. And take a deep breath. Let another negative consequence come up if you were to follow through on that. So it's 8 o'clock tonight and you're feeling kind of like you have some kind of craving and you actually go ahead and do it. What happens next? We know this very, very well. It happens all the time. You feel guilty or disappointed in myself. What would happen? Breathe, do some tapping. And then let that come to a rest. And then Look at the question, what are the positive consequences of not acting on that compulsion, on that thought? What if instead of eating that, you were to do something else instead and you didn't act on it? What would the positive consequences be? And take the same amount of interest and really 
letting a whole bunch of them come to mind. What would your thoughts be about yourself? How would your body feel? We're going to finish the practice.